Hello, hello, everybody. It's a pleasure to see you all today. We are back at the Apps Conference Podcast 2022, and we're having some fun. So it's day two, and uh, we are talking to somebody that's really had a great talk this morning. Uh, his name is Sam Gandhi. So he talked about psychedelic as a na na nature connection and catalyst, and I'm not all alone today. I'm Alekos. I'm also present here after uh, the second day of the podcast. Okay. Yes, and we'll be asking you questions. Don't worry, no tough questions, just uh, a simple question that we had listening to your talk. So could you just present yourself uh, and tell us where you're from, Sam? Uh, sure, yeah. Hello. Um, so yeah, I'm Dr. Sam Gandhi. Um, I'm from uh, England, from, from the, I live in the Midlands uh, currently. I'm uh, an ecologist by my background, so that's what my PhD is in. And I guess that's kind of building on a lifelong love of nature and being outdoors and, and wildlife. Um, and then I guess in more recent years, I kind of have, my trajectory has kind of shifted more into the psychedelic uh, field. And I do sort of, I work as an independent researcher, also a collaborator with the Center for Psychedelic Research at Imperial College. And among other things, my I guess my core uh, research focus is the capacity of psychedelics to influence people's relationships with or connection to nature. Yes, and uh, this was a, a great talk because it's not something we're used to hearing. So mm. for me, it's where did that idea come from? So you said you, you, you like nature and all, but it's true. When I first heard you talk, I said, well, it's natural to uh, do it in a natural setting. So why should we start testing something that seems natural and that we should do? What's uh, your opinion on that? Well... Yeah, I guess my f my interest here uh, was first sort of like um, ignited through attending Breaking Convention conference um, in uh, in well in London at the time. So it's a biannual conference okay. in the UK, and it's fa it's a fantastic uh, experience. Like um, that, it's been quite formative actually for my sort of I guess way into the psychedelic field, getting to meet some of the other people and sort of yeah, loads of different talks about various topics and. Yeah, my uh, friend, occasional collaborator, sort of mentor, Dr. David Luke, gave a talk there. We had a kind of symposium on sort of ecodelics and how psychedelics and ecology, where, where they meet. And I gave a talk called Who's Tripping Whom? And David gave a talk um, on sort of, yeah, how psychedelics can potentially shift people's ecological attitudes and as a you know nature lover mm -hmm. and an ecologist that sort of that caught my interest and attention i didn't know that that people were sort of looking at this in the psychedelic field and that well apart from david at the time no one actually really was a few sort of individuals were and they'd been writing about it and stuff but i wasn't aware of actual research going on so that was kind of my inroad i guess um, in, in January 2019, I started work at the Beckley Foundation as a, as a sort of advisor to the sci uh, scientific assistant to the advisor. And around the same time, uh, Robin Carhart-Harris, who headed the Center for Psychedelic Research at Imperial, he's now at, uh, in San Francisco, he knew we'd met and he kind of knew of my love of nature. And he sort of invited me on, on board as a collaborator with the Imperial Group uh, to look at how psychedelics can, can influence uh, connection to, to nature. Okay, but that's a, a great way to start. Well, we're talking about nature. Are there uh, psychedelics that have more impact on the way we perceive nature than others? And it if so, which ones? <laughs> yeah, no, it, it it seems to be the case. So it's, it's hard right now to say definitively. I'm actually involved... Um, in a in a study that was kind of my idea that but I didn't have to do anything more than suggest the idea and connect the relevant minds and people up and that's resulted in yeah a combination of these five individual data sets looking at how sort of trying to answer the question like what difference does type of psychedelic make to influencing people's connection to nature because apart from 
in David's lecture that I that I mentioned, he taught he touched on that briefly, and in his data set, he found that for whatever reason, psilocybin ah. mushrooms were were top of the pile okay. of all the psychedelics. Uh, then LSD and ayahuasca were sort of roughly sort of level level beyond that, and then sort of the, the others were kind of below that. Um, so, but it seemed there was something special about psilocybin. And so this is kind of why I wanted to do this larger study with a larger data set with, with a much sort of larger sample size and, you know, ask like, was that a quirk of David's data or is this a relationship that holds up to big data treatment? And what we found is that, again, this same uh, relationship is, is present where there's something special about psilocybin. So of all the psychedelics we looked at, um, retrospective use of psilocybin was the only it was the only psychedelic that reliably predicted nature relatedness um, increase and this is accounting for things like prior motivation to connect with nature and also the types of settings it wasn't just mm -hmm. down to okay. people taking s mushrooms in nature more or something like that or having the prior motivation or something so so yeah that study will be forthcoming um, hopefully quite soon and you just mentioned setting and i think it's a good point because you mentioned it in your talk which i encourage everybody to go check out and we will also post it in the, uh, the podcast so you once you hear this talk you can click on the next one and hear the full talk uh, so you're talking of setting it's true that sometimes we talk about settings only in a clinical way mm. because clinical tests are allowed yeah so and you were talking uh, the setting in nature could be also a way mm. uh, to consume psychedelics can you explain your thoughts on that and if you think it will be able to be tested in the future <laughs> uh, sure I mean I mean I hope it will be so I should say that in the UK, at least at this time, you can't take people. It's you, it's simply not feasible to sort of dose people up on psychedelics and take them outside of a monitor. Same in Switzerland. It's, it's and quite I think strict. Most of the countries. Um, so, and I guess I didn't really touch on it in the talk, but I did think, well, if you can't take people out into nature, at the very least, you can bring some elements of nature into the clinical space. Um, but I do hope that, you know, perhaps in the Netherlands or somewhere else, I think it. I, can, I kind of see the potential of psychedelics being used with the caveats of safety and stuff in, in place, obviously. But like, I yeah, nature-based mindfulness or nature immersion kind of retreats where you've got proper psychotherapists and people leading the kind of show, but you're doing it maybe in groups and you're doing it out in nature. We know that nature connectedness, social connectedness seems to sort of like synergize and correlate. Um, but I feel like with, with the right planning and with the right sort of safeguards in place, you could uh, use psychedelics safely in natural settings. And I feel like that would bring benefits that the clinical space doesn't not to sort of like diminish the importance of that i'm not I, in no way trying to kind of replace one for the other i just feel like it opens up other possibilities that the clinical space currently doesn't have thank you um what would be your opinion about the theories that maybe coming from nature these substances such as psilocybin and mushrooms mm could be a message from nature for us to take care of it. And especially now with the psychedelic renaissance and the fact that we're facing so many climate change problems. I think it's, I think it's an interesting line of thinking. So I mentioned earlier the symposium at Breaking Convention um, where, where I saw David's talk. And I did a talk called uh, Who's Tripping Whom? Uh, that's on YouTube, actually. And it's, it's all about this specifically. Uh, so I'm looking at sort of looking at how various different psychedelic plants and fungi in particular, um, they often a suspiciously high amount of species tend to thrive in areas of ecological disturbance or degradation or damage, mm -hmm. um, you know? And if you kind of like zoom out and look at it from a kind of biosphere perspective, it's quite interesting because we know now from the research that when people uh, or when he, yeah, humans consume these things, it tends to bring nature into focus in a very sort of like um, very profound way and uh, potentially can kind of, yeah, kindle this sense of st stewardship or concern or care and connection for the for the wider environment so i don't know if i want to like draw any like make mm -hmm. too sort of like um 
deeper influences from that but i certainly find it interesting particularly with fungi because they're a truly pan-global psychedelic mm -hmm. apart from antarctica they're, they're found 200 species found all over the world containing psilocybin and it is interesting that they can sort of like yeah kindle this sense of uh, um yeah kinship with with nature and how do you see the future of your research uh, and how what are other elements of research would you do you would you like to do in the future well yeah good i mean it's it's i i'm you know i'm an outsider to academia at this time i'm an independent researcher so i only have i guess limited power in what i do to sort of like yeah to actually do things on the ground You know, mm -hmm. I'm not part, I occasionally collaborate with Imperial, but I kind of do this work essentially as a hobby in my own mm -hmm. free time, just because I'm interested in it, I'm passionate about it. Um, but I, yeah, I would essentially, I guess it boils down to, I would like to see the potential of psychedelic psilocybin to kind of enhance nature connectedness. I would like, right now it's a kind of a side act, I guess. Uh, and I would like to see it hopefully in the in the future kind of take a more center stage mm -hmm. um, because I think it is important and valuable. It's very much worthy of being looked at. Mm -hmm. So I would like to see more nature themed or nature inspired ways of using psychedelics like psilocybin. So using them less clinically, quote mm -hmm. unquote, and having more imbuing the whole thing with more nature, be that in the preparation uh, stage the actual experience and then the follow-up integration as well there's lots of potential sort of things we can weave in i think that could be beneficial thank you for that so if we want to find more information on you where should we go uh i mean so yeah i'm i'm sort of uh i'm online like twitter and uh instagram a little bit um and yeah linkedin i'm i'm at samwise gandhi Twin, uh, Twitter and, and Instagram. So yeah, I do kind of uh, yeah share stuff and keep up things updated on there. So that's probably the best best place at this time. I don't have a website yet or anything like that. I've been told I should, but uh, yeah, that's probably the best way of kind of keeping keeping in touch. We will put all those in the show notes, so you just have to scroll down very easy and click on those links. Thank you very much, Sam, for this uh, discussion. And uh, if everybody wants to hear the full talk, well, you just click on the next podcast and you'll be able to hear the full talk, which was very interesting. So thank you very much. And uh, I look you. forward to, uh, to, to, uh, to talking to you or seeing you in the future. Cool. Thanks. Thanks for having me. And for all those, uh, continue on listening to the Alps podcast. You can, of course, go on the alpsconference.com uh, um, uh, website. You can like the podcast if you like what we're saying or don't, uh, but at, see, at least rate it or share it with your friends. That's also something good. So mm -hmm. thanks a lot, and we see each other next time. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for, for listening. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.